Back a few years ago, in 2016, 2017, it was pretty common to see your average Unity project dig themselves into a hole with highly coupled, tightly dependent code bases. In fact, I'd say it was the standard. And part of that reason is because using mono behaviors as your primary driver really makes it easy to fall into that trap. After all, you attach mono behaviors on your game objects, and now, in order to test certain functionality, you need several game objects in your scene at all times, just for your systems to actually function. Then, out of the dusk, Richard Fine and Ryan Hipple both gave talks at Unite, the Unity convention, where they talked about using scriptable objects in interesting ways to break these patterns. People were going nuts after Ryan Hipple's talk. I remember it felt like I couldn't escape hearing or reading about it on YouTube or on Reddit or some forum. And the reason I think it profoundly impacted people was that it changed their perspective on how a Unity project could be set up in a clean and testable way. And this was kind of new at the time. People were still kind of feeling out Unity as it grew in popularity. And then it kind of fizzled too. I think as people tested these things out, they realized it wasn't for every project. And so I do want to say that up front. Everything I'm going to talk about here in this video is not going to be, you know, the one size fits all solution for every game you're making, especially if you're on a small team or a solo developer. But it still is important to learn because it's a valuable tool and it also will shift your thinking on how to structure your code so that you can maintain it in the future. So with all of that said, I want to show you how to make variables using scriptable objects. Because I think when Ryan Hipple showed that in his talk, it really blew people's mind. They never really thought you could do something like that. But before I just dive into it, I want to show you quickly my problem statement here in this scene I have set up. Okay, so in my example scene here, I have my player, I can move around. I have a scarecrow enemy, and I have this health bar at the top. And right now I have full health, but if I walk into this scarecrow, you'll see I take damage and it reduces. And if I do this to the point where I'm pretty weak, it'll actually start playing an audio sound, which is this heartbeat. Pretty simple stuff. Now let's quickly take a look at how I have this set up. So looking first at our player object here, we have this player health script. And if I open it up, it's really simple. It's literally just two floats, a health and a max health, and we have this function where we can take damage, where we pass in an amount, and we reduce our health. On our health bar object, we have this health bar script. And you'll notice we actually have a reference here to our player health script. And this is so we can have our player health and our player max health, and we can decide you know, what percentage of the health bar should be filled up based on these two values. But right here is an issue. We have a hard reference to our player health script. So these things are now tied together. In order for us to ever test this health bar, we now need to make a player or some object that has a player health script on it and populate the values. Moving on, we also have this audio manager class with a similarly named script. And if we open this up, we'll see we have a reference to player health here as well. And all we're basically doing is checking if the player health is, you know, like underneath a third and then we'll play this heartbeat sound. Otherwise, we stop it from playing if, you know, they have higher health. But here we have another hard reference to this player health script just so we can get these float values out of it, which isn't the biggest deal, but it kind of is a pain. Because if we ever wanted to test this in isolation, right, we want to say, hey, is my audio manager working? We now have to make an audio manager and again, like the health bar, we have to make a game object, attach the player health script, and populate the values just to test this one component. And this is a pretty simple example, like, uh, you know, that, that's only gonna take a little bit of time. But you understand, we're making hard dependencies here when there really doesn't need to be. And it's actually just gonna make testing your project much more difficult. It also makes this component so rigid and narrow because we have to use this player health script when really what it should be doing is just looking at a float value for health and max health. And so this is the problem. And this is what we're gonna be fixing by making variables with scriptable objects. And so if you don't know what scriptable objects are, I just put out a video that kind of introduces what they are and how to make them, but I still think you can follow along here. Let's go ahead and make a float variable scriptable object. And this is the example Ryan Hipple uses in his project. So in our assets folder, we'll right click and create a C-sharp script, and I'll just call this float variable. And let's open it up. Okay, so in our script, let's get rid of all the start and update methods. And to make this a scriptable object, we don't want to be inheriting from mono behavior. We want to inherit from scriptable object. And then to be able to create this in the menu, we can aptly add a tag in square brackets and say create asset menu. And then for the actual scriptable object, do you know what we want to store in here? 
a public float value. And that's it. And I think he makes a joke about this in his talk. We literally are just storing a float value in this scriptable object. So now we can go back to the Unity editor, and I could right click on our assets folder and go to create. And right at the top, we'll see we have a float variable. So if I click this, I can call this something relevant like player health. And with this new scriptable object selected, we see in our top right we have value. And so we can set this to whatever we want. So let's set it to like 800. And here's something I want to show off really quickly. We can play the game. And so it might be hard to see because my screen's blue, but even while the game is running, I could change the scriptable object value to something like 50. And normally when you stop running the game in Unity, it resets all your values to what they were when you first started. But in the case of a scriptable object, because this is actually being saved in the project and not during runtime, when we stop running, the value persists. And this is true for when you change levels as well. So that is something you need to take into account. If you want this to reset every time you start the game, then you'll need to incorporate some sort of value for doing that. And at the end of the video, I'll give you a reference for how you can set things up like that. But this also saves you the effort of having to have all these different dependent game objects travel with your player into new scenes. If you have some singletons like this audio manager or a game manager, you don't need to bring them in every single one of your scenes in order for you know, some functionality to happen. You now have this single variable that you can reference. So now I'm gonna quickly go through how to modify this existing project to use these float variables. And I'm actually gonna make another one here. So I'll go to create float variable and I'll call this player max health. And so we'll set this to 100. And so now that we have these two float variables created in our project, player health, player max health, we want to create a class that actually consumes the float variable type. And this will make more sense right now. Let's do it. Let's create a new script and we'll call this float reference. So this float reference object is what we're actually going to be using in our other scripts like our health bar and our audio manager. And it will make sense by the end of this. So stick with me here. I'm gonna use the example Ryan uses this in his talk. We can clear out our script and we don't wanna inherit from mono behavior or anything at all. We just want this to be a public class. At the top, we can put in tag serializable and you'll see it's gonna complain at you here. You need to add a using system call at the top of your script. But in here, what we wanna do is make a reference to a float variable. So we can say public float variable, we'll call this variable. And so one of the really interesting use cases for this is getting more flexibility out of the Unity editor. So we have these float variables down here, player health and max health. But what if you didn't actually want to create a new float variable for a certain use case, right? It, like it's just too much for what you need and you just want to be able to type a value into the inspector like normal and call it a day. So you can actually set this up to be pretty flexible. So you could actually make a public bool called use constant and then make a public float called constant value. And this is what he does in his script. And what we're trying to do here is basically you can either use the float variable or you can just use whatever you put in the inspector and we can return each one based on that use constant bool condition. And so we can make a custom getter called public float value. And then we can say get return. And then if we're doing use constant and that's true, we wanna return the constant value. Otherwise, we want to return our float variable dot value. So if use constant's true, we return our constant value, which is what you can configure in the editor, and I'll show that in a second. Otherwise, we want to use our float variable scriptable object and extract the value off of it. So with the float variable created and a float reference created, we can now demonstrate how we're going to convert our existing scripts to use this new setup. So let's first take a look at our player help and get this setup. So in our player health script, instead of this float driving our health and max health, we want to use our float variable. So in here I'll say public float variable. And then you'll notice in our take damage method that we actually have things erroring out now. And that's because our float variable, and that's because you can't subtract a float directly from a float variable, you need to reference its value stored internally. So we could say health.value for these three cases, and it should be fine. Cool. Errors go away. And if we go back to the Unity editor, we see here that if I click on my player and I look at my player health script, we now have two empty options here for a float variable. So we can actually pass in player health and we can pass in player max health. 
And just like that, our player health script is completely ready to go. And now we can quickly update this health bar and our audio manager to take use of our float reference as well. So let's quickly open this health bar script. Now we don't need a direct reference to this player health script anymore. We can now make a variable called float reference and we can have player health and player max health. And then down here in our update, instead of having our player health script drive this, we could simply just say player health dot value divided by player max health dot value. So we're no longer pulling things from a script. We're just gonna be using these individual float variable objects. And so check this out. I'm gonna click on our health bar and if we look at our script now, things are gonna look a little different. So we can either pass in our new scriptable objects. So player health for the player health and player max health for player max health, cause that makes sense. And you could use the value that's stored on these scriptable objects. Or if you wanted to, you could select use constant and type in a value here like 50 divided by 100. And if I actually play the game now, you'll notice that it goes down to 50. And I can update this constant value here and you'll see that it's actually working. Or I could uncheck this and now it's actually using what's stored on this player health float variable. And so if I click on this player health float variable, you'll see that the value stored at 50 as well. I probably should have <laughs> picked a different value. Uh, but I can update this here in the editor and just like that, it's updating in real time. And this is really important because I could actually just delete our player altogether from the scene. Our player is completely gone. And yet I can still change these values in real time without anything breaking. I can still test our health bar as long as I have the health bar in here with the script and I pass in these float variables from our asset folder. We can play around with things and check things and make sure everything's all right. Nothing's breaking, nothing's freaking out just because we removed a script from the scene or something like that. So this is where the real power of decoupling code comes in. And I think this is apparent immediately. And so that was really easy. For repetition, let's do the same thing with the audio manager. And here, instead of our player health script, we can make a float reference called player health. And then instead of referencing our script, we're just referencing our value. And there we go. Three changes and we're already done. Actually, it's one more. We also want to add another float reference for player max health. And then we just want to add max health down here because this is just checking if you're, you know, under a third of your health. Okay, so now just like our health bar, if we look at our audio manager script, we can pass in our two different float variables or you could use the constant. But again, we want to use our float variables here. I'll make sure our player health is set to 100. And now we're at 100 health. I can walk into this, things are updating. And now the music's playing at, you know, when I'm less than 30% health, which is great. We're back to where we were at the beginning of the video. Everything's working well. And again, I can just completely delete my player from this. I could completely delete our canvas and our health bar, and I can still in isolation test our audio manager here. It's working fine. And then check this out, this is really cool. Let's say I wanted to test out our audio manager on a new scene and I didn't want to have to bring in our player or make a player health game object and set some values up, right? I just want to test our audio manager. I could just make a new scene quick, drag our audio manager into the scene. And look, we have our audio source, we have our audio manager script. You know, I have these saved from before, but if I didn't, I could just plug in our float variables and hit play. I could take a look at our player health float variable. It's set to hundred. And as soon as I set it to 30, well, now it's playing the music. And so without anything else in the scene, just the audio manager, I'm able to test this in isolation, not break anything, nothing's really dependent. I just am passing in these float values and the audio manager doesn't even need to know a player exists. It doesn't have to worry about a player health script. It just knows, hey, if this float value is less than 33%, play this music. And that's how it should be. That's how your projects should operate because this is what's gonna save your project as it grows and as it gets older. This type of maintainability is gonna see you get through the end without a lot of headache. So I hope this illustrated my point. I think it's pretty apparent how powerful these things can be. And you can make these float variables pretty sophisticated. So I really recommend watching the two talks. I link them down below. And after watching the talks, if you actually want to set up a project with all the things he's talking about, there's a free Unity app 
asset that actually has pretty much everything you would need. Float ver like all the different data type variables, scriptable objects, as well as events and other things that are really, really interesting. I've made a couple projects with this, and it's definitely worth taking some time to play with. I don't recommend completely converting your existing game to using this stuff until you understand how it works. I've been guilty of that, and I've seen a bunch of others do it as well, and it ends up biting them in the ass when they don't really know what they're doing. But it's definitely a good idea to research this stuff, so I hope to help you out. Like the video if it did, and I'm going to be doing more videos on how to decouple your code and how to build cool scriptable objects, so stay tuned for that and subscribe. Thanks for watching.